Hey everyone, it's your favorite web developer, TI Kevin83, back here on Twitch and YouTube. I'm live streaming this little overview talk here for Bun.js. And what Bun.js is, is it's a great new interpreter for JavaScript in the CLI. So it's a great way of running JavaScript on your local development environment. And it's a drop in replacement for Node, which is super awesome because we're going to be able to use a lot of our existing technologies with Bun. So I'm just going to walk everyone through here, like what the, the why of Bun is and the how and a couple other <laughs> cool things here. So uh, just looking here, yep, yeah, this is the main site for Bun, bun.sh. You can bundle, transpile, install, and run JavaScript and TypeScript projects. Uh, it has a native bundler, transpiler, task runner, and NPM client. Web APIs like fetch are built in. Everything's just built straight into bun. Uh, every file is transpiled. TypeScript and, and JSX just work. Tons of cool stuff. So how does it work? It's using the JavaScript core engine, which is a little bit faster than V8. The JavaScript core engine being part of WebKit as opposed to Chrome. Uh, bun itself is written in Zig. So if we jump over to Zig here, it's a C-like language, but it has this feature it calls no hidden control flow, which basically means that unlike a language like um, C-sharp, where a lot of your, um, what would you call it, like fields on a class are going to be actually secretly having getters and setters, which are functions, every value in Zig is accessed access just as like a directly as a variable without like a getter or setter function there's no there's no control flow uh around like okay we're going to run this function that then goes and gets the variable secretly it's it's just the variable is a variable there's and then there's uh no ma memory allocation no garbage collection no preprocessor and no macros so it's very, very like what you write is going to happen. And that makes it very fast according to the maintainers. Now, I, I have not used Zig directly, so I'm not going to say like I actually think this is this is true. Like it's entirely possible that you can write C and C++ to be as efficient as Zig code. The, the Zig could be like a red herring. But at least the developers of bun site zig as one of the reasons it, it's so fast like it's an enormous amount of time spent profiling benchmarking and optimizing things the answer is different for every part of bun but one general theme is that zig's low level control over memory and lack of hidden control flow or control flow like i mentioned with the getters and setters makes it much simpler to write fast software so that's kind of the background of why bun is going to be a lot faster than node and dino and you can see some comparisons at the top here. Uh, Node and Dino being pretty similar in performance. Dino having other advantages than just performance compared to Node. But we don't have to get into that. Oh, I have a separate video about Dino if you want to get into that. Um, Bun, though, just being a lot faster for server-side rendering of React. Um, so knowing that, like you, you probably want to implement Bun, right? Well, it turns out Bun is so much of a drop-in replacement. Bun was released to the public just very recently. I, I, I want to say within the matter of the last couple of weeks. And it's already running like up 100% uh, for Node stuff. So if we go back all the way uh, here. Uh, it, it, was, it was starting to be built on GitHub in September of last year. But these are all like very 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 prototypical versions if we oh oh my those are still point zeros i'm trying to find the first point one version uh 17 days ago May seven, uh, nine, yes. So it, it was about two and a half weeks ago that they, Bun had the first point one version, which that's pretty recent for it to have gone from unstable and experimental to 
it just works. And it doesn't really completely just work, but it's close. It's surprisingly close for something that came out 19 days ago and replaces the entirety of Node.js. So to look back at Bun here, um, the big thing for me with Bun is its drop-in replacement for Next.js. So Next.js is like one of the biggest uh, static site development solutions right now because it has the ability to both be a pathway to pre-render a static site and a pathway to build a server-rendered site. So it, it, it has all of the tool chain you need to build both with a React app. And this is all you need to do to use Bun with Next.js. There's an entire like create next app solution for Bun already. You can do Bun create next and it will create a next app that's already set up to run Bun stuff out of the box. And you can add Bun to an existing Next.js app by doing these steps here, Bun add, Bun framework next echoing framework next to bunfig.toml. Then you do bun bun, which bundles, that's like kind of like the bun install equivalent. And then bun dev, uh, bun uh, dev starts your dev server. So just to show you what that looks like locally here, if I do bun dev, I have my local host now and I click into that and hold on. There we go. So there is one error that I have right now that I filed an issue for. There's this error in the client has base path, but it doesn't actually end up affecting our site at all. It probably would affect it more if it was this was like a server rendered site that we were trying to run some of the uh, code to automatically populate new server rendered stuff. Um, this is a static site the, that I have here, and you can see it deployed on ti.kevin83.github.io, and I'll get into a bit how it's deploying with the new bun stuff in a minute but the point is this site here is exactly the same site as here it's all working and it's running from bun dev so we could go and make changes and they should show up automatically maybe not showing up automatically because of this bug here but we'll 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 uh we'll have to track this bug and see where it goes with buns maturity uh, anyway the the other quirk with bun right now is that bun is linux and mac only so in order to get this running, I had to set up VS Code with its uh, WSL integration. So when I'm over here and I'm on Windows, actually, this is Windows subsystem for Linux. This is actually a Linux terminal I have here running Bun. It is not a Windows terminal. And so what you can do is you can install WSL. And then once you install WSL and you reboot a couple of times to get all the updates done, you can do code dot in a WSL terminal and it will install a VS code instance that is a remoted or a remote compatible instance inside of Ubuntu. So what you can do is you can remote from the Windows VS code environment into a Linux VS code environment. So it basically feels transparently like you're working just in your normal windows vs code there's almost no uh difference to how i would feel developing in windows even though i'm technically developing in a vm so that's super cool and that allows me to run bun on windows because bun typically would only be linux and mac compatible right now so i can do uh my bun dev here i've got my local host after getting all that set up with wsl and now i have my dev site running on localhost 3000. So now that I've gotten through all that, what, what does it actually take in the real world to implement bun? Well, because I was going over to a bun where you have native TypeScript implementation, I set up a tsconfig.json. I changed my target. I like to target ES 2020. And then I changed a couple other things. Um, I had to uh, do some like include exclude stuff down here, but it, after getting all this, it, it just worked. There's an ESLintRC you can use to get lint during building, and that will uh, work if you extend next core web vitals. And then you have to also install ESLint config next at 12, uh, whatever, whatever version you're using for next. So you can see we're using next 12. You have to use next 12 along with the bun framework next, because you can see here it's, it's targeting next 12. 
And after uh, setting that up, you have to set up this next env.dt.ts next config. Uh, I have react strict mode going there. And there was the, oh yeah, the bunfig.toml. This was the other thing from the setup that it said to do to output framework equals next here. And that just gives a little bit of help to bun to what it needs to do to, to wire up its uh, integration with next. So after all that, we have we have bun dev working. I showed that. And then you can also do bun export, which that runs just as well. There There is the capability. Some of this might be actually running in node under the hood because some of these sub processes might spun, uh, spin up their own node processes. So even though we're saying bun next build and bun next export, if next itself tries to invoke node again to do something, then you need to have node installed as well. So that's why we have, we actually have both bun and node, but the, the bun dev is entirely running in bun. We can see that because we have that bun error, that very convenient bun error window showing up here, showing that there's something wrong still with the bun next integration. Uh, because we can see this is powered by bun, but uh, just for the sake of transparency, when you run something like bun uh, next or bun export where it invokes next build and next export, these invoke node sub processes. So they actually still need node to fully uh, finish building. So then what I've been able to do is do a... Uh, a little um, setup as well. This was my own uh, little addition to the the pipeline, you could say. I, I do a lot of work with pipelines and CI CD at my job. So I always like to make sure something is working in CI as well as just as a local development environment. And you can see here, I've added this uh, wonderful action somebody already created, Anton Golub, I believe would be I hope that's how this guy's name goes, Anton Golub. If, if that's not how your name works, I'm very sorry. Uh, so you have the setup bun action that's been very convenient. And I turned the cache on. And this just, by by default, it automatically installed the latest version of bun. So I didn't need to do any configuration about versions. And then down here in my build job, now I, that I've installed bun with the setup bun action, I can do bun install, bun bun use next, and then bun run export. So you can see how that's alongside the setup node job, that's all working. And we can go back to my uh, site here, my static automation site, go to my GitHub pages environment, and you can see that there's a deploy 37 minutes ago with the new commit with the updates for bun and we can see that it is working and has no errors because the export is working totally just fine there actually there is one error because i've never i've never bothered to throw a favicon so you can see when i reload actually maybe there is one fixed somewhere here maybe it's just local oh yes no there we go empty cache yeah you can see there there is an error because i've never bothered to throw a favicon in there but no errors that are caused by bun yet so yeah, that's, that's my little quick overview, guys. Uh, I'm really excited how close this is to being a fully, like, production-ready solution, just porting over with uh, just a couple line of code changes. We have our static site generated in bun now instead of in uh, node. And I'm, I'm just super excited to see where this project goes in the future. It does feel very fast spinning up that bun dev environment, and I hope that all the kinks get worked out with this has base path and whatever other issues. At first, uh, when I first tried it, like when it launched on, on day one, uh, and it, there was like a point one release, I, I tried pulling it up and there were some seg faults. So I, they were, they've actually made a lot of progress already towards the thing being bootable. And, th and this is like really promising to me. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad that we have uh, new issues every day and not just the same issue. It looks like things are progressing fast. So, Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your excitement about new web technologies, web frameworks. Uh, I hope this spells well both for uh, Next as a framework, which I love the fact that it can integrate well, well both as a static site solution and as a server rendered solution. And I love seeing these new 
JavaScript frameworks try to fix some of the old issues in Node, like performance and security, as we had with Dino in the past. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're on YouTube, th feel free to throw a like, throw a subscribe. Those are always super appreciated. And if you're on Twitch, stop back next time I stream, and we'll be having all sorts of fun on the stream, as we always do. So thank you, and have a good day.